October chicks, just a couple hours after hatch, they're walking, they're fully feathered, and they're feeding themselves. They can fly when they're basically two weeks old. Bird migration has fascinated humans for, for millennia. There are tales from Greek fables of bird migration. One of the things that's so fascinating about it is that we're still learning so much. The way the birds orient themselves or their physiological limits. How far can a bird fly? Arctic terns that breed in Alaska, where do they spend the non-breeding season? There are so many things that are interesting to humans when you start to learn about where these birds come from and what they do throughout the course of their annual cycle. It's hard not to get pretty interested in them. One unique thing about shorebirds is that they have an invariant clutch size. Almost all shorebirds lay just four eggs. The shorebird eggs have very pointy ends and they all sit very tightly together so that when the shorebird settles on them they can more effectively keep them warm. It's typically pretty cold even in the summer at high northern latitudes. They just sit for 12 hours and then their mate comes kicks them off and they sit for 12 hours and it takes them about three weeks almost exactly for the eggs to hatch. Another kind of interesting thing about shorebirds is that their chicks are precocial, which means hours after they hatch, they leave the nest. So unlike birds like a chickadee or a robin, when those chicks are hatched, they're still blind, they don't have any feathers, they can't feed themselves, they can barely hold their necks up. Shorebird chicks, just a couple hours after hatch, they're walking, they're fully feathered, and they're feeding themselves. They can fly when they're basically two weeks old. By about age 15 or 16 days, their flight feathers are grown enough that they can take short flights, so it's a very rapid growth for those guys. Shorebirds are one of the most highly migratory groups of animals in the world. The longest non-stop bird migration conducted by a bird that breeds here in Alaska, a shorebird, the bar-tailed godwit. They take off from sites in western Alaska in August and September and fly non-stop to New Zealand and Australia, flying 11,000 kilometers over 10 days. It just boggles the mind. Shorebird migration really captures people's imaginations. So when you go to the beach in Homer in early May, and you see thousands of western sandpipers, it's really kind of interesting to know that those birds came up from Panama and Ecuador and Peru and Mexico and California, and they are relying on a series of interconnected wetlands to get here to Alaska to where they breed. As people learn even just a little bit about bird migration, you can't help but to be really fascinated by how these birds find their way to the same exact little patch of tundra every year and make the same stop in Kachemak Bay every spring en route to the Yukon Delta. You know, they're all Alaska's birds, but they're shared with the world. So shorebirds are really amazing kind of international bird ambassadors.